today I'm going to show you guys a very cool retouching technique called split frequency separation. This is what's referred to as a non-destructive technique because it preserves the original data of the skin so that we don't end up with a over blurred plastic looking skin texture that you usually get from skin softening filters and actions. So what this technique does is it separates the skin detail into two layers basically a fine detail and a low detail layer and we're going to refer to that fine detail as the high frequency data um, and the high frequency data is the skin pores, the texture that gives the person's skin that realistic looking appearance and it gives it its sharpness. So if you take away that layer you end up with just kind of the blurred looking image that just looks fake. So we want to preserve that layer so that we can work on it independently of the other layer which is the low frequency data which is the general shape and contour of a person's face as created through light and shadow and color transitions. So what we're going to do to create these two layers is we're going to start off by creating two layers <laughs> and we're going to name that first one LF for low frequency and then HF for high frequency and we're going to select the LF layer and we're going to run a Gaussian blur and this is a step that a lot of people get hung up on and it really determines what's going to end up on your high frequency layer and what's going to end up on your low frequency layer. So what we're doing here is we're basically going to blur the high frequency skin detail that we want to keep. And so you just select the radius so you really can't see it anymore. Generally I've found that like around 3 to 5 works good for head shots to half body shots. So we're going to select 3, hit OK. Then we're going to select the high frequency layer, go to image, apply image, and real quick, you're going to want to make sure that you are working in 16-bit color mode because the settings for 8-bit are totally different. So we're going to select the low frequency layer, blending mode, add, scale to, offset 0, and invert it. And now you end up with what looks like you ran a high pass filter. We're going to want to change that blending mode to linear light, create a little group right here. And so now we have two layers, and I'll show you exactly what the apply image action just did. So if I toggle off the fine detail, you don't see it anymore. If I toggle off the low frequency data, you have a very creative way for sharpening an image that is actually very accurate. But we're not going to go there right now. So what I like to do for starters is I want to work on this kind of grungy skin right here. These little details that make the skin look unnecessarily bumpy. Um, and that detail is on the low frequency layer, so we're going to start there. I'm just going to create a, a blank layer over that, and we're going to call that color smoothing because that's what we're going to be doing. And so you're going to want to select the brush with a fairly low opacity. Um, and we're basically going to sample the nearby color area, and we are going to paint over the darker areas and just kind of blend that color. And you want to be careful when you're doing this because if you're not paying attention, you could find yourself just selecting one color, one skin tone area, and just painting over the whole face. And what you end up doing is flattening out the contours and shape. So you don't want that. You just want to flatten this bumpy, discolored area right here. And you also want to be careful when you have obviously her face has some shape right here too. You don't want to just completely eliminate it unless it's an ugly shadow that you want to get rid of. In that case, go crazy. But so you just want to kind of smooth the edges there and we have this little red area of the skin right there too that we're going to want to get rid of. And a lot of this may not be immediately apparent when you first look at an image and you're not used to looking for like these discolorations and things like that that create the sense of depth that you want to get rid of but the more you get used to it the more you start seeing it everywhere <laughs> so we're going to turn on the high frequency layer so you can see what I did and already you can kind of see that the the bumps and the fine detail has a little bit more contrast that's because we kind of unified the color below it and it just boosted the contrast so um, I'm going to toggle this skin smoothing layer off right here, or color smoothing. And you can kind of see that some of these darker areas that we didn't want 
have been eliminated, but we still have all that skin detail. I didn't blur any of it. Um, and then what you can do here, obviously, is just select the fine detail. Choose like a healing brush with a hard edge so that you don't introduce any blurring to the edges. And you can just kind of pop that out um, versus cloning and healing and changing everything on the same layer. You may be able to alter the... Uh, what you do is, if you're cloning and healing all the, on the same layer, we're not only going to just affect this little fine detail that we want to get rid of, like the skin bumps and things like that, but you're also going to be affecting the shadow and everything. And so if you have like an area of blotchy skin that has color beneath it, you're going to end up sampling that color and you're going to end up spreading it around the image and just creating more discolorations and things like that. So that's where having these separate layers really comes into play because you can separate exactly what you want to work on. So I don't really have time to work on the entire face here, but I'll show you guys what I did. Um, I have a, another version of this with all the layers and everything. So um, I did this in two ways. I'll show you guys a bunch of different forms of it. I have a dodge and burn curves layer that I did to get rid of the blotchy skin. I also did it via that color blending technique that I just showed you. Um, so obviously what we did here is just kind of smoothed out the the blotchy areas and I'm going to turn that off real quick so you can see the difference. And you can see here I'm not really touching the fine detail. I'm not blurring or I'm not making the skin look plastic. I'm just kind of slicing off that layer of depth that we don't want. And I did this with just the color smoothing. Um, if you want to get a little bit more precise you can use dodge and burn, but I'll show you exactly what I did for a color blending with this little visualization map. So now you can see exactly like these are the different areas that I painted in and that I blended. And then I'm going to turn that off, show you guys what I did for dodge and burn. Obviously, I missed that little area there, but you can kind of get more accurate with the dodge and burn. Um, takes some more time to get used to, and it's easier to mess up on, but again, the trade-off is you have a lot more accuracy and when you're using dodge and burn you'll want to create like a visualization layer which is just two blank layers filled with color one set to the color blending mode other set to soft light and that just increases the contrast so you can really kind of see where these modeled areas of skin are and the blotchy areas that you want to get rid of and then turn that off and then like I said before if you just basically hide the low frequency layer you end up with a sharpening effect which actually works really well in this case saves you some time as well so this is a way to work non-destructively on your images and really get that kind of high-end retouch look that looks real but you also have that kind of impossibly smooth yet sharp skin that just running a generalized action or a skin softening filter isn't going to give you so Definitely play around with this technique and see what you can do with it. It's got a lot of applications. So have fun.